Hey guys, Conjugating here. Uh, we're just going to go and we're going to be doing a casting from IPL3. Uh, we're going to have a great match today. It's going to be a uh, TVZ on Antigua Shipyard. Um, cross bonds are in force, as you can see on the mini map here. Um, but let me go ahead and just introduce these players here. Spawning to our northern 11 o'clock position, we have Ghost King Prime or Bion Prime. Spawning as our Red Terran. And then spawning to the south side here at the uh, 5 o'clock position, we have our Blue Zerg Boom Boom Prime. So, two teammates here today battling it out, and we'll see who is able to uh, come out on top. Um, if I had to s choose one player right off the bat here, just a uh, blind guess off of what I already know from you know watching StarCraft, analyzing StarCraft, and just being a caster. Uh, I would say that uh, Boom Boom actually has the advantage because I know for a fact that uh, his best matchup is Terran. I've seen him play multiple Terran games. I know that that's definitely the match I, I, be I believe that he feels most comfortable with. And I definitely think that he shouldn't have a problem taking out Ghost King. Because I'm pretty sure Ghost King, I'm not 100% for sure, but I'm pretty sure that his best matchup is actually uh, Protoss. So we'll see how this goes here. Um, I Antigua, very easy to take um, fast expansions as we see uh, Boom Boom doing here, taking a 15 hatchery. Um, and we should see a uh, pool followed up by that here momentarily. Um, for Ghost King, we are seeing a one rack uh, being built here. And then this oh, looks like uh, Boom Boom had sent out an overlord here for a scout. He is aware, you know, that it is cross spawn, so that's good. So that will give him. Some vital information on uh, what Ghost King is going to do here. Sending out his first uh, SCV here to scout. Um, and we'll see if he'll be able to scout this uh, early hatchery by Boom Boom. And here we do have the pool going down. And we also do have three drones going on gas. So I'm sure we will see speed right away um, for some early harassment. Um, this is a pretty good map. I'd say this map isn't... Super, super good for Zerg. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's bad, but I definitely think that it's Terran favored versus Zerg at least. Um, just for the wide open drops and everything. But I mean, once they get the Mutas, if the Zerg goes Mutas, I mean it's really easy for them to you know harass the Mutas. So he did see that hatchery go down and just about to be finished here, and he also does see the spawning pool just a little late. And looks like at the same time he was taking his own expansion, so going for a ones rack expand. Uh, which is actually a pretty safe build considering how late the uh, the spawning pool was up. And we just have two links being made right now, along with two queens and metabolic boost being researched. And all drones being taken off again, so he wanted those specifically on there just for gas. And now taking those off to get them back on minerals, because he's just going to need to drone up here. And he's going to probably want to harass the uh, harass the Terran here pretty early. Just to see what he has, he's probably going to poke in here with this overlord at some point in time to gain a little bit of vision. Um... So it looks like we do have a bunker going down by Ghost King. Just playing ultra safe, which is really good. Um, just doing more scouting here with this other SCV, which I do like. Um, Boom Boom going to go ahead and take the tower vision with that Zergling skip, but he's going to go ahead and park it just outside of it. Ah, okay, and then he brings it back. All right, perfect. All right, scouting out is third, making sure there's nothing hidden up here. Um, this SCV is still just rolling around, just scouting, doing all the scouting again. Looks like this queen is going for an intercept, I believe, to deny any further scouting. And yes, it looks like it is, and that SCV is not going to get any more any information out of Boom Boom. Um, these queens need to turn around. They they're not very good off creep. They're just kind of tiptoeing off that creep. Um, but it looks like he's following this up with a Hellion opening, which I do like. Uh, Reactor Hellion opening, very good against a uh, any Zerg, I guess. But, I mean, especially with this type of matchup, when he went for a two base with just Lings at the moment, just because, of, uh, blue, you know, not Blue Flame Hellions, but any Hellions, um, pretty much destroy um, Zerglings. I mean, they're light units, they're light bio units, and then they just, you know, the Hellions make barbecue out of them, bottom line. Um, but we will see just a little push. Actually, a pretty good sized push here. That's quite a few Zerglings here right away. And you look at these Hellions are, are going to get a couple shots on them, but they're going to go straight for that. Afraid for the uh, SCVs here, and it looks like they're just going to block um, for that bunker, and that bunker's taking a lot of damage, and it looks like that bunker is going to go down, and a lot of those uh, 
A lot of those Lincolns are going to die from these Hellions, but not a whole lot. He's actually doing some pretty damage. I want to see if we see a lift up on this command center. He doesn't want to take too much damage from that. But these Hellions are doing a pretty good job of being able to defend off these Lings, and these Lings are just going to have to run out of here because they're not going to be able to combat these Hellions, especially with uh, one more coming out. Surprised that wasn't two. That might have been a nope. We'll say he just didn't have enough for it. So that might have been a mislead. We'll say he just didn't have enough money for it. Uh, let's come in here for a second try here at these SCVs. Uh, one Hellion getting a couple good shots off. The other one's coming down. Looks like he is going to lose quite a few. But, uh, you know, during this, I do like that uh, Ghost King is actually going for a little Banshee play. Um, boom, boom, you know, on that pressure, taking a third and trying to establish it very early, which is really good. I do like to see that. Looks like he still just has the one gas taken. Now, he, has, he does have two gas taken here. Um, it looks like he doesn't have any other uh, production buildings yet, so just his wings. So the only thing he'll have to defend against this will be his, uh, his queens. I don't see an evil chamber. Oh, there's the evil chamber just being made now. So we'll see if he can get spores up in time to, uh, to block this. But uh, Ghost King going to push out with these Hellions here, maybe just do a quick scout, see if he can't find these Lings, and he is going to meet the Lings head on. Oh, and so many Lings are going to die there. Losing just... I actually didn't lose any Hellions, just took a little bit of damage on the one. But so many Zerglings going down, and that was just just a brutal massacre, those Zerglings. They were just barbecue right there. Throwing down a defensive spine crawl here if I buy Boom Boom. Um, I do like that choice. I actually don't like the choice of his Evo. I think he should have placed that... Uh, more towards the ramp here, but uh, that might just be me. I don't, I don't play Zerg, but uh, that would have been my best guess where to place it. But he does have a spark crawler and a spine going down here. Um, for this Banshee, this is doing so much damage, up to five kills, um, taking a lot of damage. But that spark crawler just coming up just in time to be able to force that Banshee out. So pretty good play. Um, Boom Boom did a pretty good job holding that. He didn't lose a whole lot. He did work, lose a couple workers, and he has a, quite a few links, but not something that he can't replace. Um, Ghost King gonna go ahead and take his third off of this expansion here, and looks like he's going to go into just some uh, marine production here, grabbing some stim. I do like that choice. Looks like we do have some links doing a run by in here, and we'll see. They're gonna take out quite a few. Oh, actually, those aliens. I didn't even actually see those in there. Those Zerglings are actually aren't going to do a whole lot. They are going to kill a, a couple of SCVs. And actually, they're doing a better job than I thought they would be doing. Taking out almost all those Hellions. I think, oh, that Hellion will be able to kill off those last five. But there are a couple of them being annoying up here. It looks like they will be taken out quite fast by that Hellion and that uh, Banshee. So that, but that was actually a really good harassment. I did really like that he killed quite a few, uh, quite a few workers on that push there. So I did like that. Um, I mean... These trades that he's doing aren't unfavorable. I mean, he is doing a pretty good job. Um, oh, I do like Ghost King denying the uh, the spread of this creep, denying it as, uh, as possible here with his Banshee. Um, he does know that the Spore Callers are there, so he's going to have a hard time getting some shots in. But uh, I do like his choice to go ahead and try to see what he can get nonetheless. Um, we do have a Spire going down for Boom Boom, so we might see some, uh, some Corruptor come into play here. Um... Especially since he did see the Banshees come out. Um, we might just see um, some Muta play as well. I'm assuming we'll see Muta play. Because we didn't see a whole lot of Marines. Um, looks like he does have tanks now. Um, is he getting... Yep, he is getting um, Siege Tech. Looks like Stimpak is just about done along with Shields and Weapons. They're about halfway done each. So, I do like Ghost King's place here. Um, but I think... That Boom Boom is in the far better position, having just a little bit of a supply lead. Not by a whole lot here, but the second uh, hatch going on that macro hatch, he's going to have so many, um, you know, free supply to do whatever he feels like here. And we'll see what he donates it for. Um, he does have, let's see, all in gas, I believe. Yep, he does have all his gas taken. And with a big bank like that, I'm pretty sure that he is going to be going um, for the mutilists there. And we'll see if he doesn't get the Greater Spire. We'll see if he doesn't tech into Hive and go for the uh, Broodlord. Uh, these Banshees doing a good job of just scouting, just kind of being on the map. Um, if they need to, they can just cloak. But these Lings are going to take out a couple of those Hellions we're seeing in the middle of the map here. And we're going to see another run by here on the third. And the third is not very well um, defended here. And he might lose a lot of SCBs here. He's going to lose at least two or three. Maybe even four. And we'll see if these Marines are going to be another clean up these Lings. That is quite a few Lings, but with Stim, he should easily be able to take out those Lings, which he does. Only loses about four or five Marines. 
Um, I Joel's King needs to kind of step up his production here just a little bit. I mean, he's doing a good job, but uh, Moon Moon can just keep doing these unfavorable trades just because Lings are so cheap. You know, doing these runs by, he's killing so many um, workers, you know. Uh, I'd like to see Ghost King kind of come in here for, for some uh, more harassment of his own. Um, these Mutalisks are moving out here. Looks like the drone's going to go ahead and take a fourth here as well, I believe. I believe the fourth is queued up. Maybe not just yet. But these Mutas are moving in. Uh, right before the uh, tower can be finished here, they're going to do a little bit of harassment, getting one, two, and just the two SCVs for the time being. Looks like the tower will finish um, before any of the. Ah, oh, he, he is coming in for another s attack here. Killing up just one remaining for more of his mutas here. I'm um, doing some pretty good damage against those mutas. Um, those marines are going down fast, but it's uh, actually helping out a lot. Uh, so these mutas are just going to hide and need to fly away. Uh, we haven't seen that fourth being taken just yet, and there it was going down just now. We do have attack two going down for our reserve player and fire attack one, and also two two for our um, Terran player. As long as weapons one for those uh, siege tanks, I do like the siege tanks. They're gonna do a really good job of cleaning up those uh, those links here. Little bit is finished here at the third, but these mutas are gonna attack it anyway. They're stimming in. He does lose just a couple. I think he only lost maybe one or two mutas, but some of them are very low now. He needs to be careful with those. He put a lot of investment into that. He does not want to see those go um, right away. So flyer attack is about to be done. We do have him see him get in the infestation pit. So we'll see if he goes infester or if he goes straight to the hive tech. Um, I'm assuming he'll get some infestors here, maybe do some fungal growths, um, crash him with some banelings and some lings, and then finish up with a muta, so mutaling bane. Um, I definitely do like that play here. It looks like he's getting uh, flyer carapace one, along with ground carapace one as well. So, definitely a good play here. Ghost King here, just kind of. Not, not necessarily turning, he hasn't done a whole lot of harassment here, but he is. He is kind of turning. He hasn't really scouted here. I don't think he knows about that fourth yet. Um, we'll just check his vision. Yeah, it doesn't. It's completely oblivious to that fourth. So I mean, that can be kind of scary if he doesn't know what's going on yet. I mean, that might definitely take him by surprise, and I'm not for sure if you know if he'll be actually be able to hold. Looks like he's gonna push out here. Um, looks like he's gonna siege up, and with a small force, just stim it and try to take out as many mutes as possible. Those medics are gonna need to pull out. And looks like he's gonna cut him right into these siege tanks. Oh, it looks like he will just miss it running into those siege tanks. Pretty good control by uh, Boom Boom. Almost fully maxed out with 149 to 177. Um, I definitely like Boom Boom to attack here. Looks like he's going to push in with these uh, mutas one more time. And fourth, four professors on the way. I think he's getting ready to just uh, break the Terran. And those Lings and Banes rolling in, taking out a lot of siege tanks. And oh, doing so much damage. And all the siege tanks are going to go down. The Marines is doing what they can to try to pick it up with almost all those tanks going on. He's going to save one tank. And still, even after that, losing all those lanes and banes, he's still in the supply lead. Uh, actually, Ghosting just took the supply lead, but he wasn't in the supply lead. Uh, but it shouldn't be long for him to almost instantly remax that army. He does have four bases, you know, and with that, uh, that uh, macro hatchery, I do, you know, he is doing a really good job. It looks like is going to go and take out some of these uh, creep tumors. I do like that, just trying to proceed the creep as much as possible and not giving um, Boom Boom vision. It looks like Boom Boom did go for the hive here. He actually is grabbing Adrenal Glands, uh, Ground Carapace 2, and the Greater Spire. So we are going to see some Broodlords, but it looks like Ghost King might actually be prepared for this because it looks like he is starting to produce um, some Vikings. So I do like that choice. Also getting 3 3 for his Marines and Weapons 2 for his Siege Tanks. Definitely like that. Looks like he's also going to take a gold patch here for his fourth base. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that turn into a uh, orbital command set. Or not an orbital, I'm sorry, a planetary fortress. And we'll see. Actually, he's going to a planetary fortress. I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed whenever they take that gold base on Antigua. It's pretty much by tearing that be pretty much guaranteed to be a planetary. Because it's just the decision makes the most sense. A little push going in, losing a couple of lanes to uh, the, the fire there of the tanks. But looks like he's going to try to set up. Maybe a little bit of a flank here, and coming from the side, those tanks, oh, are, we're not sieged. He actually missed a, bit, a little bit of timing there. I do like these infester, the infester-ling, um, bit of a main combo here. Um, we'll see if he actually can't push through with this, and we'll see if he can't uh, break our Terran player. Uh, looks like we do have a couple of cover-uptors coming into play here. 
I'm sure we'll see those more from the brutal lurking coons here in just a moment. Ground carapace, three being researched now. Um, and 3-3 almost being done for our Terran player. Let's see, he's it free to snipe off some of those... Ooh, he went for the... He went for the uh, SCV. I actually think he should have maybe went for just the uh, medevacs. I think that actually might have been maybe just like a little bit safer of a choice. Um, just doing another scan here. And trying to receive as much creep as possible. We do have our Broodlords being good. Now we have a mini battle going over here to these. These mutas are going to take out a couple of marines here, but more are going to come in to save the day. I'm just trying to receive even more creep. The brood, one Broodlord finally being done, the other one about halfway done here. Um, using a couple of bailings here to try to clean up those marines. He wants to keep that creep spread as uh, strong as possible. He really needs to keep it out there because that's what gives him this huge advantage. Um, those Krupp are doing some good job against those uh, those Vikings, making room for these Broodlords to get in there and start taking out these Marines and these tanks. So I definitely like this. Um, Gilski's trying to do a contain here, and he's doing a pretty good job with the missile turret set up. Um, he, he might actually be able to do this. The supply is very close, 180 to 198. Um, those Broodlords are taking quite a lot of damage, but the must be a Queen. The Queen is going to have a chance using those Broodlords. I do like that a lot as well. Just killing those Broodlords, making them worth their weight in gold. And we'll see here, there's only two meta, or two Vikings left here to hold off this whole group of these Flyers. Uh, and three more Broodlords being morphed right now, along with 3-3 uh, three, three about to finish here for our Zerg player. Um, four more Vikings in production here for our Terran. And we'll see a lot of these siege tanks probably go down, but there are those missile turrets. He doesn't need to be careful, because even though there aren't a lot of Vikings, those missile turrets are going to add on, and those Marines with Stim are going to shred through those Mutalisks. Um, doing some really good damage here. A lot of those Corruptors are going to be going down very soon. A lot of those Vikings are coming up, but a good fungal on those Marines. Some of them momentarily from being able to push forward and following everything else. Those Broodlords, like I said, worth their weight in gold. Looks like one is going to get sniped. So he does lose one Broodlord down to three. Um, still getting off some good head. Good, getting off some good fungals there. Um, wow, this is actually a really good game. Um, I'm not for sure anymore because it looks like Ghost King is actually starting to tip the, tip the uh, scales here with these... Uh, with these Vikings taking out as many of these rulers as possible and actually taking a, a supply lead of 195 to 186. Um, I do like Boom Boom's choice here to go for the uh, the Broodlords, but he, he really needs to either move in with his whole army or do something here because he really needs to move out as soon as possible. And with this many Vikings coming in, I think this is actually going to be a GG here pretty soon because he just needs to start leapfrogging tanks once all these uh, Corruptors are gone. Because then all of a sudden is the links and the Broodlords, and it looks like he's going to go in for an attack here. Um, a lot of siege tanks are going to go down here from this, from these links and banes. Ace is taking a super amount of damage, but these Broodlords and Corruptors are going to take a lot of damage as well from these missile turrets and these Vikings. Even more Vikings and Marines getting rallied across. Uh, and tanks from the low ground are getting some good shots off on those Zerglings. And the supply is just slowly tipping in Ghost King's, Ghost King's favor here. Um, very close, 154 to 135. A lot of more broods going down. That brood gonna get sniped off before he's able to escape. Uh, just three creptors left, and he's down. He's morphing banes just to hold off what the what the Terran has here at the moment. He does have a huge bank, 2,000 minerals and 800 gas. Um, currently getting an ultraless cavern. I don't a light ultraless cavern on this map. It's really hard, especially with the planetary. It's gonna be really hard to take out the planetary. And it looks like Ghost King is actually gonna go ahead and, and then push on the fourth here. A little harassment on these queens, being able to take a one-two. And all three of the queens? No! That queen actually is going to get away here for the time being. Um, but she's probably going to die pretty soon. There's nothing else to give her health. There's not any other queens. A lot of drones going down here as well. Doing a pretty good amount of economic with those links coming in. Um, good choice to run behind those minerals, making sure that only one link can attack at a time. Here come the banelings. Well, she's actually using a lot of games to kill that. Probably way more than needed. And obviously those medevacs are going to be fine since that queen is not attacking them. Um, all while keeping this contained at the same time, I definitely like that choice. Looks like um, Ghost is actually going to get up his fifth here, um, and we'll see what he can do with that. Looks like Boom, or I'm sorry, Boom Boom taking a um, his fifth as well. He was on fourth, yeah. Now that, that will be his fifth, and then we'll see what he is able to do with this. Um, we do have a little bit of a battle going on here. We got a lot of Lings dying here, and also a lot of Vikings going down to a lot of the Corruptors here. But still holding his contained pretty well. Um, Ghost King is just trying everything he can to break um, Boom Boom, and Boom Boom is just not making this easy on him. A spy of 179 to 114, just so close. 
Um, wow, this is a, a nail-biter, because I just really don't know. I mean, the supply is so different, but I mean, both are doing so well. Um, but I think the, our favor is taking into the the side of our Aaron player. Just has so many, uh, so much supply. And actually, GG. So, Boom Boom knew it was over, and he just uh, didn't see it going. Um, he had three Ultralis in, in uh, production, but that wasn't going to do anything with that contain he had with those siege tanks. And so he knew it was over, and it was just time to GG. He literally had, like, no come at the end there. Um, he was basically mined out on all bases, uh, just trying to establish his fifth. So, um, yeah, Ghost King actually doing a really good job coming back from that. Um, just doing a hard contain at the center there, and actually just... Uh, just waiting him out, and Boom Boom actually just ended up starving himself out with those with those trades earlier. I mean, if he hadn't done those, he might have might have turned out a little different. If he, maybe if he had macroed a little harder. Um, but overall, that was actually a really good game.